Yeah, it's a, it's a sort of a confusing thing, but it's not a confusing thing, because the fact of the matter is, um, you were always promised a second coming, weren't you? Ready or not, here we come. Uh, God, this is gonna be so long, too long. Why is it always too long? On off, 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 on off. Doesn't make a difference for how long. Information is just coming out like a flood, like a flood, like a flood. So this over here, these are the planks of the knowers are. This is episode two of Occupy God. I want this one to be short. The last one was kind of long, but it was kind of like the first one, so that's what happens on the first one. So it was like, hey, getting to know you, getting to know all about you, that sort of thing. That would be really awesome. The basic premise of it is um, that, you know, remember from the first episode, it was like the bam, bam, bam thing. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to switch hands, too, just so to have a variety, so I don't favor one on the right hand of the throne versus the other. And if you haven't seen episode one, before watching this, do me a favor, see episode one, and then later on, I'll tell people to see episode one and two, but then after that, you know, just whatever you watch is whatever you watch. That's great, because there's a context, because I'm not just only... <gasps> All right, anyway, this is called The Read. The Read is the linear reading out loud in a form of utterance that is your own peculiar style but not the normal way you speak starting at in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void in Genesis which is the beginning of things and going through all the way out loud until you get done with Revelation and you know he that heareth say come and let him that heareth say come and then you jump into the Penguin edition of the NJ Dawood Quran and you read that out loud until it's done. So that's the basic premise of it. Uh, so some of you may not, you know, may not be interested. And what I said in the other video was essentially doesn't really make a difference because when you do read this and you download God 2.0 into your operating system, your brain, your heart, your mind, your eyes, etc., etc., and because they are words in the public domain and are limited in amount, right? That's all there is. They're not going to be adding to this stuff, and I sure didn't write it. So it's there, and you can read it. If you don't read it, it's okay. God God loves you, you know what I mean? God loves you. It's all good. The metaphor is what we know about DNA. If you were given the opportunity to read your human genome, right, and they said now you can read your DNA, your human genome, well, if you read it or you don't read it, nothing's going to change. You're still going to be who you are, doing whatever you are, whatever age you are when you're doing what you're doing. But then again, if you read it, well, you never know. It might be kind of interesting or something, or you might find out something that was really pertinent to you in your particular case. Like you have a recessive gene for cancer, and if you do continue, you know, wearing socks made out of nylon, that you something bad will happen to you, and maybe that helps you. Obviously, from the first video, it wasn't meant to do to this the uh, corrupt leaders of religion that for years and years, and really, that's the other part. Got to fix that in the last one. Okay, I said we need you need an enemy, right? And the, the clergy are one of them. But you know okay you know what clergy are people that's just basically what they are and so if someone's been doing a job as a clergy it's been around for thousands of years it's not their bad you know but if you are a clergy person or you're an evangelist or someone that thinks I know the word of God and I'm going to both you know and start a church like the freaking knucklehead oh god if I you know, I pop him in the head is the one dude that takes his people and goes to like cemeteries and then protests and say, you know people are burying their dead for goodness sake you know and you think that you're preaching the word of Jesus by you know, going out there and harshing people out, man, you are so burning in your own hell, and I promise you, promise you, you and those who follow you are burning in the hell of your imagination, whatever the heck that is. Anyway. For some people it's going to be very difficult if they don't manage to actually access those words which they profess to believe to let them understand that it's it's alive it's the resurrection those of you who care less fact of the matter is if you read this book or these books or this one book which is what the whole point that these are actually one book meant to be together bad marketing on the muslim part but then again it hurts you know served all the people in charge they should have glommed it on like the christians did the old testament because the christians knew that if they just went with their gospel people would be like what the heck is this so they said sorry jews our fellow jews because they were jews at the time there's a chronology first came the jews then the christians and the muslims in case you don't know first was the torah then was the gospel then was the quran and for those of you that are concerned or worried about other religions and other groups like Buddhist, Hindu, uh, 
you know, uh, paganism or, or, or Native Americans and stuff. They're all good. They're all good. Trust me. The reason I'm focusing on this particular strain of religion is that it's the word. It's a whole different thing. You'll understand that it's the tree. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why is it the tree? Because it's made of wood. What, you know, it's made of paper. What is paper made out of? It's made out of wood pulp. You ever been by a river that has a wood mill on it? It smells like shit or shittim. It's made of shittim wood. That's the Ark of God. It was made of shittim wood. And this is the Ark of God. God is what? God is the Word. Here are words. But the Word is love. So every surah, every chapter of the Quran starts out with Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, which to the American ear sounds like, you know, but the same so does, you know, Adonai Hebrew. Now, frankly, if God can part a Red Sea and make a guy pop out of the grave, he can surely work metaphor and he can surely get people to translate it and have it come out through some kind of more sensible, modern, rational means, the evolution and outflow of an organic form of articulation, which manifests itself in this latter day in English, right, in these books that you can buy at a store. I'm getting over that. The whole point of the matter is, I don't want to get myself in a tizzy because that's a problem. I don't want to get in a tizzy. This is the time for Occupy God. Occupy God. God is love. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was of God, and the Word was God. And if God is eternal, you know what the fact of the matter is? Then God is still. God is not just the was. God is still up and running in the form of the Word. It's in the form of an experiment. You can do it yourself. It can be tested. Anyone can do it and cost you nothing like the free gift of grace because that's what it's about. So what you do is you start at the beginning. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light and then you just keep going and keep going. It might take you approximately about ah, six, ten hour days. So if you go to school and you've spent three, four years in college to get a degree and blah, 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 or you spent years and years reading manuals to figure out how to do whatever, or you train a jack-in-the-box and they give you training, it's not going to pop in your head. And that's what everybody would like. It's like, oh, God is what I want. God is, I believe my God. It's like, okay, good, good. Probably true, but you know, that's not going to help us get together or unite or be bonded in any kind of meaningful way. What's going to help is if we all download what is essentially the disk operating system for the human soul. It's a bunch of words. Never mind what the outer meaning meaning is, the fact is these words in English, if you do what I'm suggesting you do, which is basically try and carve out a chunk of time and get it done in one shot, just like you download software for your computer, you don't do it in dribs and drabs, and if it's been there a long time and different things have happened, files get corrupted. So the Jewish text without the Christian and the Muslim is corrupted. It becomes a very formalistic kind of rigid way of thinking. Very smart and clever, but it's almost like elementary schools. Turn right, turn left, cook this, cook that. The Jew, the Christian text it says himself, he didn't come to break the law, he came to fulfill the law. And so one says, oh, well, I'm a Christian, and every is like popping fresh dough. You go to any ghetto anywhere, there's a million churches. Why? Because people feel like crack the grace of the coming down of Jesus Christ, but then they backslide right away because they don't go back to the beginning and get the knowledge and get the structure. But that being said, that's still not enough because with Islam and Muhammad comes a whole nother level. It's like adolescence. And so when you read the Quran by itself, you get this very, very harsh religion because like Sam Harris says, this is it's pretty harsh, you know, strike off the heads of the infidels and it's almost black and white, but it's kind of like when you have a kid who's an adolescent and you say, hey, listen, dude, you're either going to clean your room now and do what I'm telling you, or you're gonna you're gonna hang by tetra hooks, and I'm gonna pour scalding juice down your throat, okay? But if you do your job and you do the thing I'm telling you, okay, you'll get like 72 hot virgins, and you'll be on couches, and it'll be great. And you'll be, you know, it'll be great. So, and and that makes kind of its own sense in a way. So that's basically it. You just get those two books. So, so, but just in case to encourage you more, because uh, God. This is so long, too long. Why is it always too long? Anyway, oh, thousands of years of things to fix. Okay, so like a metaphor, it's a disk operating system. And one of the symbols we're outflowing is the computer, which is based on simply a yes, no, on, off, I, O, I, O dichotomy over and over and over again, creating no answers at all, though we all think computers are going to give us answers, but creating great, great, crazy stuff in the process. Nice videos, blah, 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 but it's still on, off, 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 on, off. It doesn't make a difference for how long, forever, and still it leads to false conclusions which are multiple in the way they look. But you know, that's okay because that's life because there you have it, okay? So that's one metaphor. But the thing is, in that metaphor, this God created you uh, and you are the complete the actual computer. You have the the, 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 the the computer up here, and this is the way it works. This is the hardware, and it's really good to touch, you know what I'm saying? And if you really enjoy it, you know, that's part of the game plan. Uh, you gaze on these symbols, right? These little symbolic 
glyphs and blah 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 and then your brain decodes them and then you use your voice to utter them out in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep blah, blah, blah. and then your ears resonate with that sound and then incorporates it into your brain which then again continues the process and it's a self self downloading software system the thing is if you try to understand it with your left linear brain the same brain you use to understand lotto and unemployment and how to buy stocks and hedge funds and whatever the heck and use your computer etc then it gets lost in all the gobbledygook that's why you need to do it a different way and that's the thing I'm telling you it's called the read what you do is you get the beginning you get yourself a place if your neighbors jack up the the um, you know, their speakers do music, then you have every right as an American. What makes you scared, huh? What makes you scared? <laughs> you have every right as an American to, in your house, go ahead and recite these words and utter them and sing them, because that's the way it was done in the Jewish days. That's the way it was done in Jesus' day, and that's the way it's done in the Islamic day. But in America, we're all, and then the Lord said, and then the, 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 and you can almost see the horns coming out from the clergy as they stand up there. Anyway, point of the matter is, you are your own self-downloading computer, and then when it's done, it teaches itself to you. So if you start with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and you just keep going, and then don't worry about being able to underline and understand and comprehend, because the greatest minds have not done it. Hans Kuhn, neighbor, uh, any of these people, they've spent years and years and years, and there's no one's going to understand them, so forget not trying to understand them. Just trust that your brain is the graven image machine, created in the image and likeness of God, and what it does is it mirrors and understands and reflects and understands at in your deep subconscious level. And this is what neurology teaches us. Your brain catches everything. This is the age of visual imagery that's bomb, 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 bomb. Like the Pink Floyd song, Us and Them. All that you are, all that you do, all that you see, all that you touch, all that you feel, da, 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 is all that you will ever be. If you, you know, are a linguist, screw you. I don't care. The fact of the matter is, I'm just telling you the way it is. The Word of God exists as God in relation to you if you download God. In this day, in this latter day, in this country that's so weird with all its freedoms and stuff, from sea to shining sea in the form of this English word. Okay, so there's the Noah's Ark, and the Noah's Ark is a play with Noah's Ark, and in that latter day there's a flood, and all this information comes out since the beginning of the computer age, well, since the printing press itself, you know, think about the time that this was written in, the, the, the printing press itself, but then now the computer age and the TV age, all the information is just coming out like a flood, like a flood, like a flood. So, this over here, these are the planks of the knower's ark, someone who knows, right? And then you simply download it into your system. It's like your disk operating system, and then you run whatever software you want on it. And the thing is, if I download this, and you download this, and the other one downloads this, we all have this in common. Here's why it's English, because in, in implicit in the Jewish orthodoxy and the Islamic orthodoxy is the linguistic chauvinism that God only spoke Hebrew. So anything that's translated out of Hebrew is necessarily derivative and not quite God. And God would not, you know, God would like, oh, I would speak Hebrew. Uh, and then the Muslims, oh boy, think the same exact thing. The God speaks in Arabic. And so any Quran, this Quran here, is not really the Quran, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, because it's in English. How can it be the Quran? Ha, 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 ha. Hey, you guys, you atheists, listen, uh, just hang with me here, because that's the way you got to talk when you're talking about this stuff. God manifests himself through the Hebrew tongue, and it's God's manifestation through the Hebrew tongue that elevates the Hebrew tongue. It's not that the Hebrew tongue was so delicious that God goes, oh, I really got to get together with these people. It's the same with Arabic. It's Everyone spit. He's like, hi, I love you, honey. Sounds like Arabic itself was brought up and elevated by the manifestation of the Word of God in the form of the Quran. And so when you read the Quran, you will see it's what it says in there. And when you read all three together, you will understand that that's the way it works. Okay, I think that's about it because, you know, I'm just annoying the heck out of myself. Yeah, it's a, it's a sort of a confusing thing, but it's not a confusing thing because the fact of the matter is um, you were always promised a second coming, weren't you? Ready or not, here we come. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, do me a favor. Tell your friends. Have fun. We're going to go on a great ride. Occupy God. It's God 2.0. Buenas noches.